In the beginning when life was just starting to form on earth, there was not many living creatures. There were only small microorganisms 3.7 billion years ago. As time went on, other life forms started to appear on earth such as plants, animals and dinosaurs. A lot of time had passed until humans had started to appear on earth. But what you might not notice is that a lot of the living creatures living on earth at that time are not here now. In fact, 99.9% of all species that have ever lived on earth are now extinct. Extinction is when every single individual of a species is dead. Even if there is one individual of that species remaining, it is not extinct. But as soon as the last individual of that species dies, the species is extinct. Extinction is not exclusive to animals and can happen to any living thing, for example plants. It is only recently until we have actively started recording the extinction of species and have discovered the increasing rate of extinction. We have even recorded the extinction risk of thousands of species through the IUCN Red List. The International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, and Red List, which stands for Red List of Threatened Species or short for IUCN Red List, is the world's most comprehensive inventory for the global conservation status of species. The IUCN Red List categories species into nine different groups based on their risk of extinction. The first group is the extinct group, which is basically when every single individual of a species is dead. The next group is the extinct in the wild, which is when a species survives only in captivity. After that is the critically endangered, which is when a species is in extremely critical state. Next is endangered, which is when a species is a very high risk of extinction in the wild. Vulnerable is when a species has a high risk of extinction in the wild. Next is near threatened when a species is close to being at a high risk of extinction in the near future. Least concern is when a species is unlikely to become extinct in the near future. Data deficient is when the data of the status of the species is not enough. Then comes the evaluated which is when the status of a species is not evaluated. Depending on the species risk of extinction, we conserve it so that we can prevent it from extinction. But what are the consequences of extinction? Why is it bad? You see, a healthy ecosystem relies on animal and plant species. When a species becomes extinct or endangered, it shows that the ecosystem is slowly falling apart or collapsing. Each species has an important function to play in the ecosystem. If it goes extinct, it can damage the ecosystem and can even cause other species to go extinct which further damages the ecosystem. A healthy ecosystem is important as it purifies our air, cleans our water, provides us with food, they maintain our soil, they regulate the climate and even provide us with raw materials and so much more. So now that we know that biodiversity is important for our ecosystem and how important our ecosystem is, there still remains the question of why do species go endangered or extinct. Species are becoming endangered or extinct because of reasons such as habitat loss, climate change, co-extinction, pollution, poaching, diseases, overconsumption, competition and a lot of other reasons. Unfortunately, a lot of the reasons are caused by humans. There is also another type of extinction known as mass extinction. A mass extinction, also known as an extinction event, is when there is a rapid decrease of the biodiversity on Earth. There are currently five major extinction events. The first one is the Ordovician Silurian extinction event. The second one is the Late Devonian extinction. The third one is the Permian Triassic extinction event. The fourth one is the Triassic Jurassic extinction event. The fifth one is the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. It is even said that there is a sixth extinction event currently going on known as the Holocene extinction which is a result of human activity. Determining if a species is extinct or not can be very difficult as a species potential range can be very large. This leads to a phenomenon known as Lazarus taxa where a species that was thought to be extinct suddenly reappears. Now that we know why species go extinct, let's see some of the most famous extinct species and how they went extinct. One of the most famous extinct species is the dinosaur, which is a diverse group of reptiles which first appeared during the Triassic period. 
between 243 and 233.3 million years ago and became extinct around 65.5 million years ago during the Cretaceous tertiary extinction event. It is believed that this event was caused by geological and climate changes that interrupted the food supply of the dinosaurs. Another famous species that went extinct is the dodo. The dodo is an extinct bird that was flightless and was endemic to the island of Mauritius. It was first found out by Dutch sailors in 1598. In the coming years it was hunted by sailors and also the invasive species and the destruction of its habitat caused it to be extinct. Now that we know about extinct species and their causes for extinction, there still remains one more question. Can species be brought back from extinction and if so should we bring them back from extinction? Yes, it is possible to bring back extinct species as technology became more advanced through a process known as cloning by using DNA from the remains of the species. Although it is a very new technology, the process of bringing back an extinct species is called de-extinction. Although we can bring back extinct species, it doesn't always mean we should as certain species will not fit in the current ecosystem. For example, dinosaurs will not fit in the current ecosystem. We should always try to preserve and protect species as they are important for our ecosystem. Thanks for watching. Bye.